Welcome to Tools, Tech, and Gear. I'm Seth. Today I'm taking a look at the Seaflow diaphragm pump. This little pump uses 120 volts AC and one amp to produce 45 PSI with 3.3 gallons per minute. So basically, I've got a water tank and I want to be able to feed this tank into a hot water heater. The hot water heater has to have pressure and so this little pump right here will take water from this tank and pressurize to be pushed through for a shower. And it also has a flow sensor, which means whenever the uh, water is turned off, this also turns off. When the water turns on, this will turn on and provide that pressure. So let's check out what's inside the package here. Open this up. We've got a little baggie which contains a couple of adapters for barbed fitting. There's also a filter in here. Now you'll notice everything is half inch thread. There's also the diaphragm pump itself here. A very short cord, looks like about three foot. Um, but So we'll go over this here in just a bit with more detail. And there is also some documentation over here. Uh, let's see here. I guess all we really need is this one right here, the diaphragm user manual. Let's take a closer look at this diaphragm pump. This is the model SFDPA1-033-045-33. That's quite a model number. The open flow is 12.4 liters per minute or 3.3 gallons per minute. Voltage 115 volt AC, amps 1 amp max, and the pressure 45 PSI, which is 3.1 bar. All right, so the power cord is on this side. It's about three feet long, so not too long. Up here at the top, you got your two wires going in for the power, and it's got the in the out outlets, and those are half inch NPT thread. It does have rubberized feet on it to help with vibration whenever this is mounted. This little shed is where I'm gonna be installing the diaphragm pump. I've got a 55 gallon drum connected to the IVC tote, so there's lots of water to work with. I think I will uh, not bore you with the actual plumbing of this, so let's just test it out with a garden hose real quick. Here's my setup real quick. I have this 55 gallon drum full, and I have that plumbed over to a ball valve, which then goes up to the diaphragm pump. And I also have a receptacle over here so I can plug it up. Now I'm gonna use a garden hose just for this test. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in here. This will just simply get the water out of my little shed. I'm gonna open the water down here. Okay, that should now allow the water to be to the diaphragm pump. Now let's plug it up and see if I remember to turn the power on. Oh yeah. We have water over here. Check this out. And it is pressurized. Nice. Very cool. I'm gonna unplug this real quick. Okay. Now, in order to test out whether or not it is uh, uh, controlled by flow, let me put a valve on the end of this hose and uh, turn it off real quick. Well, I couldn't find a valve to put on here to close it off, but I think if I kink the hose, we should be able to uh, turn off the diaphragm pump because it'll think that no flow is required. All right, there's our flow. Okay, it's still got a little leak to it, but yes, it thinks it's off. Now it's back on. Very cool. All right, that's enough for now. As a quick recap, I have the diaphragm pump right here on the wall. It goes down, which connects into this barrel. And eventually I'm going to have a hot water heater going up here and another house filter and that will provide a shower inside. Now this 55 gallon drum is connected to 
this IBC tote over here. And so I've got a total of about 300 gallons to work with, and that should be sufficient for taking showers or washing hands. So that's my current goal with this system. Well, I hope you found this quick overview of the C-Flow diaphragm pump to be helpful. If you want to learn more about my project here, then check out my Land to House channel, and I will have a full video on using a hydraulic ram pump to bring water up from the creek, and then setting up all of this in here. All right, thanks for watching. I'm Seth with Tools, Tech, and Gear, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.